Alright, what have we gotten ourselves into this time? So apparently we um, control a character named Wells. Um, I'm not really sure if you're familiar with Wells, but H.G. Wells was actually the author of the Time Machine uh, novel he wrote uh, a while back in the, uh, in the late 1800s. And um, we are stuck 800,000 years into the future. So how do we get ourselves out of this predicament? Well, we start by uh, by picking up this icon, uh, this icon. The Nautilus guides the Voyager through time. I'm afraid I do need a guide to explore this time and place. So this uh, Nautilus, for those uh, who haven't uh, read uh, Jules Verne's uh, novel, um, is actually uh, going to help us um, in some of the occasions in the game. Um, this is the inventory screen. Um, if you hit the enter key, you will uh, grab the Nautilus by hand, and, and, and you can show it to uh, well to anyone really. And uh, they all give you their their insights on this uh, on this Nautilus you have. So um, before we actually head out this alley, um, the uh, icon in the bottom left corner, uh, representing some sort of shell, um, is actually uh, comprised of two. Uh, Parts. Uh, the white part is actually called your uh, jar garul, which is your amount of magic energy, uh, which we'll be using in the in the later on. The green uh, sort of uh, bar is your is your health energy, or the the sand points are they called? So, if you're uh, running out of sand, you're running out of energy, and uh, I'll show you how how that works as well. So let's uh, let's head out this alleyway. And um, immediately we see we see a critter here. Can you guide me through this strange place, little animal? That's what I thought. Yeah, he is uh, he is on his own. Now I'm just going to show you that uh, this. Uh, it's impossible to get through. This path is blocked, so we have to go the other way. And for the first part, uh, I'll be just, uh, oh, oh, who's that? I'll just be walking through this uh, game as, um, as I can run, but um, I will only do that when we have actually visited the places already, so it gives you time to actually uh, have a look at the surroundings. If you have something to trade, I'm your man. <sighs> Thank God he speaks my language. Okay, so this is the trader. This is uh, the guy you can uh, you can trade items with, and um, let's uh, hear what he's got to say about this Nautilus we're carrying. You have a Nautilus? That's a sacred object which only the chosen are allowed to wear. I can't give you anything in exchange for that. Okay, I'm not exactly sure if we should wear this thing, but um, we are going to uh, going to put it away and, and talk to him some more. Hello, my name is Wells, and I come from England. I seem to be lost. Can you help me? If you have a name, you are one of the chosen. You must know a lot more than I do. You can find your way alone. I am afraid that's impossible without my machine. I'm stuck here. Yeah, so, so we, we actually don't have a machine. That's, that is correct. Tell me, do you know what year it is? What is a year? Well, I'll be. That's a practical way to find where you are in time. Oh, it's like an hourglass. If this is the kind of thing you want to know, you'd better go and see the priests of the Sand God. Okay, so, so these priests um, gives us a clue on, on where to head on next to. Do you know the name of this city? This is Hourglass City, you fool. Even the outcasts know that. Well, I didn't know that. Young man, where are your parents? They might be able to help me. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Go and see the priests. They'll be able to answer your bizarre questions. So asking about parents is, is apparently a bizarre question? That's, uh, that's strange, isn't it? You really do look like an outcast. 
well, that's probably because I'm an outcast. So, so that sort of exhausted the dialogue of this uh, this, uh, this trader. Um, there is a door over here. It's closed. Yeah, and it's also probably locked because he won't go in there until later in the game. Uh, this is the stall. If you have something to exchange, Adamid, I'm interested. So he calls him Adamid, and um, uh, what is that? You about? really do look like an outcast. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that's it for on uh, on this part. Well, let's uh, head out towards the uh, town center. You see these uh, these animals roaming around um, most of the place. Um, we are we need to uh, interact with them later on in this game, but for now we're just going to let them hop about. Okay, so this is Hourglass Square, and. Um, Hourglass Square is basically a six-pointed star, um, and we're just going to explore it for a while. On the right here we have the, uh, the two guards. You're not allowed to enter the Hierarch's Palace. Okay, so the Hierarch's Palace, this is where the Hierarch stays, and um, we won't be able to enter there. Uh, you can beg all you want, but we won't let you in. You can beg all you want, but we won't let you in. All right. Well, I'm not begging. Hello. My name is Wells. I'm afraid I'm a bit lost. Can you help me? If you're lost, go see the priests. They'll refresh your memory. Okay, so again with these priests, uh, we, we must find them, I guess. You'd better get to work instead of taking it easy in the shade. Hmm, true. Don't you have better things to do than keep on talking? Um, pff, well... It's not. I have nothing to say to you! Stop bleating like a tripodon and get back to work! Okay, tripodon. What is that? The sun isn't the only thing that gets me hot under the collar. <laughs> okay, alright, alright, I'm leaving. Wow, they're not very friendly, are they? Let's uh, find someone who is kind of friendly. Um, maybe this uh, this woman over here. Hello. L lovely weather we're having, isn't it? I'm sorry, but I have to keep on working. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to bother you again, but what do the inscriptions you're engraving in the stone stand for? They're only decorative designs. Everyone knows that the priests are the only ones who can decipher symbols. You must be an outcast. I'm afraid I'm lost for good. Well, he's already getting quite depressive, isn't he? Well... I don't have much time. I have to finish my work on the Sand God's temple. Where is this famous temple? Beyond the Grand Arch. On the other side of the hourglass. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's the place where we need to go. Uh, we're just going to follow this path around. Will end here. No goes back up. So she's talking about the uh, the Sen God's temple, which we need to visit, which is uh, which is opposite the uh, the hourglass. Now you have uh, a few doors on the end of this uh, on the end of this path, and the next they are both closed. That guy you just saw there had, had really nothing to say but some nasty remark. Um, but before we head out this arch, um, we are actually going to have a little chat with this guy. What magnificent plants you have there! Well, I take good care of them. And I'm sure to have a crop of ripe sandalopes before the next hourglass. Tell me, what is the purpose of that large hourglass on the square? Why, it announces the arrival of a wave to the sand people. It proclaims the sand god's will. A wave? Are we near the ocean? You've been in the sun too long. 
The sea is beyond the edge of the earth. But the breath of Kronos knows no limits. Kronos? Yes, Kronos, the sand god. You'd better go and see the priests. Oh. This wave you told me about, how does one escape from it? Miserable Mirthweed, you must be crazy. You can't escape from the wave. Our memory belongs to Kronos. Good lord, this is all so strange to me. Yeah, he is slightly losing his head. I mean, he's getting you know, weird Kronos, waves. What are all these about? Don't stand there like a sand squash stalk. You'll start to take root. Okay, well, we're gonna head out and, uh, and see if we can find some information from these priests because, um, well. <laughs> I'm a child again. What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Wells has changed into a child. Um, and this was probably the wave that uh, they've been talking about, and um, apparently it turned us into a child, and, and and he has also changed. You really do look like an outcast. Go and see the priests. Okay, so. I'm just going to show you uh, what's happened, uh, or what's, what's, what will happen if you if you don't pick up the Nautilus um, at the start of the game. of Kronos nourish the roots of your spirit. I remember a long voyage and a shell with the crystal chip in it. You are an outcast. Now you are back among your people. What do I have to do? Your task is to care for our plants. May the sand god bless you. Okay, so that is uh, not the uh, the best outcome of things. Um, let's try that again. So we are heading towards the uh, the temple. Now you see this guy who just. Uh, you know, gave us the water, but since we have uh, got our memory intact, he is, uh, he's now going to uh, give this uh, water of Kronos to others. May the water of Kronos nourish the roots of your spirit. Your memory has been restored. Go back to the task the Sand God entrusted you with. This so. miserable Mirthweed, it's everywhere. So you see that uh, the priest is just uh, going to, to all the people who have lost their memory and giving this, uh, this water of Kronos. Um, and he has also uh, changed a bit. He has actually become younger. Do you understand what happened, my friend? Kronos has taken back what belongs to him. If only he would ripen my sandalopes and make my sand squash grow in exchange. I have to take care of my plans. Come and see me later. 
and that we will do. So this time we are going to the, uh, the temple without any further delays. And this is um, Temple Square where we um, show you around. There is uh, not much to interact with but um, it makes for good um, you know, viewing of the surroundings. Oh, I can't get through. This is a, a passage where we will uh, find yourself going into later in the game. There is actually uh, a passage over here. Um, no, it's not. But there is an altar here, and um, there is a man praying. I think we should let him pray in peace. And he also uh, has uh, left something here, which uh, which we can't pick up at the moment, but we'll come back later. First, we're going to have a little look at the uh, the store here, where there's a, a very charming. Uh, Woman. I need help. Listen, I'm here to do business, not to chat. Don't stay there. Clients will think I'm busy. Right. Very charming. This is actually the alleyway we've been talking about. This is the way out of the city, um, which we will uh, visit soon. But for now, we need to find the entrance to the to the temple. There's another altar here it looks like an altar for offerings and um, there is actually um, uh, well there was but thinking about that this is the entrance to the temple where we are heading and uh, we're going to have a little look around here we have some uh, some benches uh, to to worship guy in the picture who is uh, creepy. Okay, shall we disturb him? Why not? Could you help me? I come from a faraway place, and I'm lost in your city. Hmm, Efaid. I feel you have an uncommon energy. What energy? What are you talking about? Kronos has asked me to watch over man, and his power permits me to see beyond appearances. I detect a spark in you that illuminates the Chosen. You seem to know a lot of things. Could you explain to me what that incredible force that submerged the city was? That was the wave, the wave of time. It is the respiration, the breath of Kronos. And it allows him to take away man's memory. That is the only price man is obliged to pay for his protection. But we priests and the sacred gods keep our memories so that we can guide man more wisely. This might appear to be a privilege to those unfamiliar with our religion, but in fact, it is a great burden for we are responsible for every one of the people of Kronos. Don't you think it's a bit cruel for a god to take away a man's memory? Not at all, Ephraim. In his infinite goodness, Kronos gave his priests the power to restore man's memory, to give it back to him. You say that this god Kronos keeps people's memories. What does he do with them when they die? Man doesn't die, Ephraim. Time, which passes slowly, has no hold on them. Only plants and animals die. Oh, this world is very strange. The Shekhandar monks are exclusively devoted to exploring the mysteries of this world. Their name means they are the Chosen of Kronos. In the middle of the desert, they live secluded lives in their monastery. Perhaps these monks could help me. I'm stuck in your world. 
Do the Shekindar monks control the secrets of time? You ask a lot of questions if I go into the copper sphere. You will surely find some answers there. Okay, so um, he's told us uh, quite a bit of information. These uh, the Shekindar monks um, seem to be our next uh, objective, but um, we are just going to uh, enter this copper sphere here to learn a bit more. And um, what, is this? what you're looking at is a chronomantic lock. There's one on every sphere. You mustn't touch it. Chronomantic lock. Don't touch that lock. You might harm the sphere. Okay, so we are going. We are And um, you can see immediately that we have a duplicate uh, Jagaru um, glowing. A cavern? This sphere is too small to contain a cave like this. How strange. But um, we will come to see the purpose of that a little bit later. Are you looking for something? A talking phantom? I don't understand. I must see about this. The sea of eternity is far from us, Master. Okay, so we're in a chronomantic sphere, and um, this is uh, the Moor, and um, oh, he's actually quite friendly. I see that you are a magician, Master. To learn new spells, simply touch the luminous prisms in the cavern. Spells? A magician? I don't believe in those things. I am a scientist. Please, Master. You're hardly a stupid sandbag. Your spirit can see beyond appearances. Okay, so so when we venture uh, a little bit further, we 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 see these uh, these glowing objects, and um, we're going to pick them up because these are actually spells. This is the first spell, the Deharmonizer spell, um, the most popular spell <laughs> amongst aggressive magicians. Um, we're going to uh, see what that spell does in a minute. Now you know the spell that corresponds to that prison master. If you wish, I can help you practice. Inside the sphere, you won't lose any jet gold. Yeah, we will be able to practice. Um, this cavern actually extends quite a bit, um, which I'm not going to show you at the moment because there are more spheres like this in the, in the game um, and we'll need to explore them. But uh, the rest of this sphere is empty. There is uh, There are two more glowing objects. Spells. This is the warp spell, which is uh, an invisible spell. Or turns you invisible. The hourglass ointment, uh, and that basically heals chronomantic wounds. It is a very useful spell, as we go. We'll see later. Now you know the three spells which are available to you in this sphere. If you like, you can practice casting them. That is actually quite a good idea because uh, since we have duplicate Jack Rule, um, which is the the energy and the uh, the magic. Um, we, we won't be harmed in any way, so um, let's try and see if we can try uh, the, uh, the first one we've got, which was the deharmonizer. Do you wish to use the deharmonizer, Master? It's a spell that can destroy your adversaries. Under its power, the sand of their bodies is no longer in tune. Disappears until the next 
appear when one is out of harmony with time. Yes, that seems logical. I will create an illusion worthy of being a target for you, Master. You must concentrate on it. Okay, so now we have uh, the ability to shoot uh, at that target. Uh, we can actually shoot at the Lemur. Sorry for you. In this sphere, I am invulnerable, Master. You are not concentrating hard enough, Master. So, if we shoot him not being in practice mode... First, choose a spell and then cast it. I must be notified in order to advise you, Master. So we have to choose the spell again, going into the menu and then out of it again. That will trigger the, uh, the practice. Go on, Master. Um, let's see. Well done, Master. You have succeeded. But I must warn you. Illusions are more fragile than real beings. It takes more than one good blow. So let's have a little look at the other spells. Um, the Hourglass Ointment. You have chosen the Hourglass Ointment? Very well, Master. I will put you under a chronomantic attack. You are going to attack me? But I've done nothing to you. Don't take it personally, Master. The Hourglass Ointment will help you to strengthen the bonds that the chronomantic attack damages. It will re-harmonize you. Don't be afraid. Okay, thank you. This spell has the same power as the sand herbs. Since they are quite rare, it helps to use them sparingly. So there is one more spell that we can uh, practice, the, uh, the warp spell. You have chosen the warp spell. Excellent choice, Master. Do you think so? Yes. The warp spell time out of sync. You thus become invisible to those who are present at the same time as you. Does that mean that I am in the same place, but at a different time? Solely on the strength of my will? I simply must take some notes. Try the warp, Master. There's something you should know, Master. If you start an activity with a living person, you will no longer be out of sync. Okay, so now that we've uh, we've learned all the spells, let's uh, have a little chat with the Lemur. There is nothing more I can teach you at present, but there are other chronomantic spheres which contain other forms of knowledge. Where are the spheres? Where the green. Shekindars are, but I doubt that other Lemurs are as attentive as I am. You mustn't trust them, Master. Something intrigues me. How can a cavern exist in a metal sphere? Reality can be twisted, Master. Lemurs like familiar surroundings. It makes our exile more comfortable. Your exile? Aren't you here of your own free will? Hmm. Let's say that we were not consulted about certain decisions that were made. But who can say they are truly free in this world? A glorious destiny awaits you, Master. You will be a brilliant chronomancer. And time will hold no secrets from you. God hears you. If magic could only help get me home. Master. 
Master, you can leave the sphere now. Your future is yours. And with those words, we will part the Lemur and head out of the sphere. Now that you have awakened your power, you must go to the monastery. You must become a Shekandar. Your future is assured, Ephaid. How can I find the monastery? The desert is vast, but with Kronos as your guide, you can't lose your way. Kronos as my guide? But how? Well, there is a relic, a very precious object, which contains the will of the Sand God. The Shekandar entrusted it to us, but unfortunately it has disappeared. But how can I get to the monastery if I don't have the relic? You have got to track it down. You won't be able to find your way without it. People are calling me strange names. Do you know what Ephaid means? What I find strange is your question. Ephaid means those who play and for whom thoughts are futile. Adhamid signifies someone who is a guardian. And the Visaids are the oldest and wisest. Oh, I think I understand. The Ephaids are the children, and the Adamids are the adults, and the Visaids are the old people. So this whole world is immortal, and transforms itself according to the rhythms of the wave. <laughs> what a bizarre place. I wonder when the next wave will be. Only Kronos knows that, Ephaid. Since you are not yet a Shekandar, his breath can transform you again. If you are faithful and worthy, you will become a Visaid, the state closest to the Shekandars, the one all men wish to attain. They possess wisdom. What if I haven't been worthy? If you have made an error or turned away from Kronos, you will remain an Ephaid. <laughs> I know a lot of people who would like that punishment, becoming children again. Be virtuous. Maintain your faith in Kronos, and you will not remain an Ephaid. Okay, um, so we've learned quite a bit. Um, Kronos, may your name be in everything yes, no, and no, every no, man. And, uh, just change uh, from children to adults into, uh, into elderly. Huh? Um, in the back of this statue there is a... Uh, there's something odd going on here, but I can't put my finger on it. There's a doorway here. I haven't actually been able to see what's behind it, um, but maybe in this, uh, let's play, I'll, I'll figure it out. So, we need to find a relic in order to, uh, to find the Shekandars in the desert, so uh, let's see if we can find that relic. May my actions always be in harmony. So there are a few ways to uh, to find out uh, about the uh, the whereabouts of this relic, and um, we're gonna have a little chat with this guy. I want to meet the Shekandars. It, it seems as though I have the gift. I hope I can find my way through the desert. There is a way to keep from getting lost. The chosen are worthy of wearing the relic. Chemist said the priest told me about it. The Shekandars call this relic a chronomantic compass. It indicates the precise way to the monastery for those who possess Jadgarul. May the Sand God accompany you on your quest for enlightenment, Tepaid. I'm not really looking for enlightenment. I'm looking for a way home. The monastery will be your new home, if you're able to overcome all the trials that await you. Don't forget, Tepaid. You need the compass if you want to get to the monastery. So yeah, the chronomantic compass, that is, uh, that is the relic. Now there's, uh, there's one alley that I've forgotten to, uh, to show you, which is just uh, opposite the temple here. Um, it's this way. Uh, this is actually where we will uh, come to uh, later part of the game, but uh, there, is a, there is a red door here. Halt! No one enters here! I'm simply looking for information. Look elsewhere. 
Okay, so we can... You don't have the right to enter. Only the Hierarch decides who has the right to enter the red door. Don't bother, you can't come in. But we will enter that door later in the game, so let's just uh, head out and find uh, that relic. So, once again, there is a... Uh, This is the way uh, back to the Hourglass uh, Square, but we are going to uh, take another passage. There is, uh, which I wanted to show you, uh, a bowl here, which you can take, but uh, we're going to leave that. Um, you can take the bowl and trade it uh, for a knife, but we we have other... I'm going to find another way to obtain that knife, but you can take that bowl and bring it to the trader at the start of the game. But um, we're actually going to just uh, going to the uh, the end of the city, the, the way out, where uh, where we will find some information about this uh, this relic, where to find it. Now this is pure optional; you don't have to go here to uh, to progress. But um, like I said, I'm going to try and explore most of of, uh, of this game and. Um, Gives you more background. Is there a way to um, rent those tripodons? You must be crazy. Those tripodons belong to the guards over there. Do you think I could strike a bargain with them? No, I really don't think so. So we have to try and get a tripodon. The tripodons are the animals. Uh, don't uh, stay there. Cross. The guards don't like me to be distracted from my work. Hey, you! Get to work. By faith of Fakazis. Get to work, or I'll break your ribs! Oh, this guy isn't very friendly, is he? Are these animals yours? If I hid, I have no time for you. My name is Farkazis, and Farkazis has no time to waste on you. So these are actually the, the, the tripodons, which we need to, uh, to ride across the desert. Would you lend me one of your animals? It's out of the question, Evahid. You can't borrow tripodons. Why do you want one? I have to get to the Shekandar Monastery. Well, that's insane. It'll be your demise. The desert is full of phantoms and spectres. You won't survive it for long. Well, what if I go by night? It'll be cooler then. Night? I don't know what night is. Besides, it's never cool in the desert. So apparently there is no night as well? Tell me. Have people already tried to reach the monastery? Oh yes, many have tried. But without the gift, it's impossible to find it. But I have the gift. That's not always enough. Listen, I do recall one Ephahid who tried to get to the monastery. He didn't succeed, but at least he made it back here. He has a stall in the city. Go and see him. Of course, he may not remember anything. Be good and leave me alone. I must be vigilant and protect the city. So there, uh, there we have uh, the information that the storekeeper has um, has the relic. He looked like Sir Willoughby, but less stubborn. Don't go near that animal. It's mine. Okay, well, we don't really want to have something any further because um, he's one aggressive bastard. So we're going to head back to the... Uh, Hourglass Square. I might just uh, skip this bit. So here we are back at the uh, Hourglass Square and um, we are going to catch up with that gardener. I'm looking for the Shekandars. I don't know where they are. As a matter of fact, I don't even know who they are. But I've heard that in order to find their monastery, you have to cross the Great Desert. I intend to go to the monastery. What do you think? You are brave, Ifaid. Everyone knows that it's a long and dangerous journey. I'm not afraid. Hmm. Take these anyway. They are sand herbs. 
Thank you. So these are the sand herbs that uh, that the uh, the Lemur in the in the copper sphere talked about, um, and they sort of uh, give us extra energy or jar good. Now, before we actually head back to the store and talk about uh, this relic, I'm going to uh, show you another way of finding out uh, where exactly that relic. Uh, was and it's by talking to this now turned into an older I have lady. to finish this decorative plaque for the temple of the sand god. Speaking of the temple, perhaps you've heard about the relic? What? What relic? The one that mysteriously disappeared. I, I, I had nothing to do with that. Well, I think you do. Let's um, be a bit more aggressive. me. I stole the relic, but I couldn't make it work. I traded it to a merchant who wanted to go to the monastery. Don't turn me in. I beg you. I won't tell the priests about this incident as long as it doesn't happen again. I swear it. Oh, Kronos, forgive me. <laughs> well, poor old lady. But anyway, that gives you the, uh, the whereabouts of the relic. To the store. So, back at the store. I was told that you were trying to reach the Shekandar Monastery. It's possible if I yes yes I believe I did try to do that but uh, it was just an attempt did you get lost in the great desert no no I had a relic a chronomantic compass oh so what happened my back hurts if I I don't know what happened I don't remember anymore do you still have that compass W will you trade it for something? Yes, yes. I, I have it here somewhere. Uh, oh, my back is killing me. <laughs> Listen, if I eat, that compass is not just any old merchandise. It's a very precious relic. On the other hand, oh, my back is so bad that if you have something to relieve the pain, I'll give it to you. Now... We do ha actually have something to relieve the pain, uh, which is these these sand herbs. But um, I'll trade you this hourglass of ashes for those herbs. It brings good luck. Well, shall we trade? We we are going to trade this uh, for the hourglass of ashes, although it's not activated. It's uh, much more useful than a couple of herbs. Um, and if we uh, try to um, give it back to him. Oh no, I don't take back what I've traded. Okay, um, how about the Nautilus? A Nautilus? How can you wear a Nautilus? Only the Chosen are allowed to. Right, so... We need to find an ointment for his back. Um, Thing is, um, there is really no 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 real clue to uh, to finding this ointment, but um, I'll show you where it is anyway. Um, it's um, it's in Temple Square, which we will flash to now. Right. Well, having done a little bit of time travel of our own, um, we now arrive at the store. I'm trying to find a way to get to the Shekandar Monastery. I can't help you, I'm a merchant. All I do is trade. Now, this merchant um, has actually uh, behind her stall there in the, in the shade. But what are you doing? Get out of there! Uh, an ointment lying there, but um, we, we can't get them there because if we, if we try to pick it up, uh, she'll just shoo us away. Now, there are two ways to get that ointment. Um, 
the, the, the one is using the invisibility spell and um, just sneaking past her and getting it, but um, that will uh, cost us a bit of jarred guru. Um, the other way is trying to mess with uh, with an animal in this cage. All right, you asked for it. You be quiet, or I'll make a little mint sand scraper of you. There we go. Now, there seem to be some herbs here, and um, if you try to touch them or take them... Don't touch anything, Ephaid! Oh, I was just looking. <laughs> and even with the invisibility spell, she, she won't let you take it, so uh, I'm not sure what, what, uh, what's up with that. Um, now that we have the, uh, the ointment, um, we can go back to the stall. All right, so we're back at the store, and um, I'm gonna try and find. Uh, he still has that relic. Where are you going, old man? Visaids often have back pain. I believe there is a remedy, but I can't remember what it is. Well, my friend, you are in luck, because we actually have it for you here. Ah, oh, he's, he's walking away again. Hello? You have anything for my backache? I have this ointment. They say it's very effective. By Kronos! Oh, that's exactly what I need. Thank you, Ephaid. I will give you this relic in exchange. It will be useful to you. Okay, let's, um, let's do that. Now we can try and see if he knows anything about this relic. Do you know how this works? Oh, I have no idea. Well, that's a bit of a shame. But anyway, we've got what we wanted. Let's head back to the uh, city gates. Now, here is the priest, and he, he, he might be interested in, uh, in the fact that we found uh, this relic. Hello, Mr. Priest. You found it. Praise be to Kronos. Where was it? It's a long story. I'll tell you when I get back. <laughs> Find the monastery, and you will become a great Shekhandar. I don't know why, but I feel that your future is important for our world. Yeah, it's a very long story. Anyway, um... We have the ointment, we have uh, basically everything we need to end this chapter. Now, when you now enter this uh, uh, this area, you'll get a, uh, a cutscene. Leave my tripodon alone if I hid. That's my tripodon! Now, he has shot that kid and uh, we are, we are, we are going to um, deharmonize this, this man because uh, he's just, uh, he's a bastard. Now, there is, um, which I forgot to show you, there is a, there is a, uh, there is a, a weapon, the one that he uses that, um, that lies on one of the altars where the man was praying. Uh, you, you can, you could take that weapon and uh, and shoot him with that as well. Um, you won't uh, lose any Jack rule. Um, but if you don't have that weapon, um, you can also find it when we leave um, with this uh, with this uh, with this jumping animal over here. But first, we're gonna just have a little chat with this this guy here because now he's free. What is that? It's a compass. It helps you find your way in the desert. Uh, yeah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I don't think you'll be bothered by that guard again. Thank you, Ephaid. Now I can work without being afraid. Thank you again. May Kronos watch over you. So if you haven't taken the uh, the uh, the weapon at the altar, um, all you have to do is just uh, just click on this animal. There's something in those saddlebags. There you get it. 